It's all been the rocket. Well, as Hazel mentioned, he lost the first four frames. Uh, Matthew, he's now four frames behind. He's still not back in the arena. He's probably just psyching himself up just to try and get a couple of frames and stop this mini rock. Thank you. Frame 15, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. So two more frames to be played in this second session. And there's the two reds, one either side of the black. But look at this cue ball. I was just about to say, Matthew could do with both these frames. He could certainly do with one of them to be no worse than 10-6 behind. But if you can't see the balls, you can't pot them. I think he needs both frames to have any chance, Dennis. In this form, I really don't think how anybody can give Ronnie four frame start. Going into tomorrow, first to 17 these semi-finals. He would only need seven out of a possible 16 frames. Touching ball. That touching ball helps Ronnie. You can just send the white around the angles. You just try to find a difficult spot near the ball cushion. And he's been pretty good at that throughout this semi-final. using the two cushions rather than three. Well, he has used the three cushions and he's found the gap. So really, Matthew has got to really play a telling safety to try and force an error. Stephen was saying pressure on every shot now from Matthew because he knows if he misses he's a good idea what's going to happen so can he put a telling safety in here well that certainly opened the reds but he hasn't got that cue ball on the cushion okay the blacks tied up a little wry smile from Matthew there's a red on. But there's a lot of reds in the way to get back to pink or blue. Might just be a gap, believe it or not, between those reds. Now you can see it just to the right. Can he find it? Well, he hasn't found the gap, but what a nudge what? on the red. And when you're playing well, you're queuing well, you get the nice little cannons that put you into good position. This is what Ronnie's looking at, and uh, he's now looking to see where he can put the cue ball. You can go two ways, avoid brown and green or avoid brown and yellow. Well, how's your luck? Six. A little bit further up the table and he would have had that red just behind the pink and that would have opened the pink up. Set. Not the cleanest of pots there. He's 
come back a little too far. He played for the pink. He can still pot the pink. I don't know if he can screw onto the two reds to the right of it. He could, and that's absolutely perfect. I say absolutely perfect. Played the cannon as he intended, but pink has to go as near to its own spot directly behind it. Yeah, if the pink doesn't pop, I'm surprised it didn't 30. play the blue there. It's unusual for Ronnie to play a shot that would block a colour up. So we just have to wait and see. See if it pops to the left corner. He's got too much side on that. 14. And just tuck in behind the green with the red spread like this. He's looking at the brown also. Now then. <laughs> Tell you what, that takes some popping at that pace into the middle pocket, 80. that's for sure. He had the easy snooker behind the green. He's definitely in attacking mode. In the zone, then, is what we call in sport. He just... Uh, not seen anything negative at all at the minute. Nineteen. And that shot with the opposite hand. He made it look so easy. He's having to work hard for this break. 23. And he's looking at that shot that you mentioned, Stephen, as to whether the pink will pot. Just checking it out again there. If not, it'll be up for the blue. Twenty-four. Well, surely even the great Ronnie O'Sullivan can't make a frame-winning clearance with the ball sitting like this. But I wouldn't put it past him. Blue and maybe a little 29. cannon onto the red next to the pink. Third. Mm, not far enough to be able to do that. He's got the two reds that are near the cushions and those two. So the, there's four reds available. They look as if they're tied up, but they're not. 